mankind had gone its own way. But God remembered Noah. He sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. They intended to harm him, but God intended it for good. With man, this is impossible, but God can do anything. They took him down from the cross and laid him in a tomb, but God raised him from the dead for the wages of sin is death. But God's free gift is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins. But God, being rich in mercy, made us alive together with Christ. My flesh and my heart may fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. But God, you are greater than them all. Lord, in this morning, God, we just want to focus on the things that you are famous for, God. All the things that we've heard you can do. All the things that we've heard you've done for other people, God. This morning, we're believing that you are going to do it for us. You're gonna show up for us, God. You're gonna do it in our lives, God that we may pass that hope and that belief off to other people. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. And there is no fear, cause I believe there is no doubt cause I have seen your faithfulness my fortress over and over
been lifted. Two step. Get free to that. Come on. Say. Well, like the way has been lifted. is in you, God. Our hope is in you. Our hope is in you, Father.
way maker, promise keeper. You can put your hope in him. Late in the midnight hour, put your hope in him. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. We believe, God, what you said. Because you promised me. Can we just put those hands up all over the room? Those of you watching at home, this is a time not to disengage. This is a time to receive the promise that God has for us. A promise that is beyond the Republican Party. It overrides a Democratic Party. It overrides Washington, D.C., Sacramento, California, or any other entity that tries to set itself above He, above who he is. He's greater than the giants that you're facing. He's greater than the valley you're currently walking through. He's greater than the trouble that may be around the corner at your home. He's greater than the financial difficulty. He's greater than the cancer that's in your body. He's greater than the circumstances that you don't seem to have control of. Who is he? He's a God that doesn't slumber and he doesn't sleep. And if his eye is on the sparrow and goes to every funeral of the sparrow, he'll take care of his children. He'll take you through that water and that water won't drown you. You're asking God, why am I in the waters? And maybe God's saying, because your enemies can't swim. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You have enemies and they're no match to who your God is in you. So I, chal I challenge you today, all over this building and everybody home, let God rise within you. Let the creator of heaven and earth, let the one who doesn't slumber nor sleep rise within you. Let the God who puts kings up and puts them down, let him become big inside of you. Let Jesus be glorified. Let Jesus be magnified. Let the God who is powerful, almighty, all-knowing, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, don't you dare sleep on him. He's great, and he's greatly to be praised. Sing it together. My God, that is who you are. Oh, let's sing it, choir. You are great, great, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Say, you are a great, great, miracle worker. great he can do all things and I know many of you this morning are facing a trial you're facing adversity I want you to know in spite of what you're going through God is still great he's great you say well I need him to show out in my life then you have to remember greater things shall you do because he's went to the father so until that greater manifest in your life stand in faith and say the greater is coming because the greater lives on the inside of me. And I know my best days are out in front of me. You received that this morning? I know that you do. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for joining us online, family. Before you sit down and before you go to the refrigerator, I want you to greet somebody and we greet you online, but you greet your neighbors in this congregation. Tell them hello, what's up, how you doing? Oye, como va, however you talk, say what's up to them. We're honored you're here today. taking your seats. Thank this amazing worship team for leading us. We're so honored that you're here today. Welcome to Oasis Church. If you are a guest, welcome, welcome, welcome. Would you give our guests a round of applause this morning? I know we have a few today. Thanks for being here today. 
You can text 94,000 Connected Oasis. We'd love to stay in touch with you, let you know what's happening all around here. We're just honored that you're here today. I do need you guys to know that um, I had on boots with high heels this morning. So my outfit was better than this, but my feet couldn't withstand two services today. So sorry. I tried for you guys to look cool. I look cool? Thank you. Thanks. You look cool. You look real cool in your white cool kicks. You all look cool. You're all amazing. We're glad you're here today. Welcome to the Oasis family. There is, there is no substitute for getting here in person and being a part of this family. It is an amazing experience to experience Oasis. So we are so glad that you are here to experience Oasis with us today. We wanna honor all of our veterans today, all those that have served. Uh, we are so blessed to be able to honor you today. We want you to enjoy this video for just a moment. If you're a veteran, we thank you for your service. Enjoy this video. Would you stand this morning? We want to honor you today. If you're a family member of someone that has served, would you stand as well? We honor your sacrifice today. Thank you so much for your service. Guys, give it up. Come on. Thank you, thank you. The unsung heroes of this nation are those that serve and sacrifice, leave their families and, and all their comforts at home to bless and protect our country. So we're grateful for our veterans today. We honor you today. We wish we could do more. I don't even know what to say. We're just so grateful for you and your service. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We honor you today and every day. We're grateful that you're here and that you're a part of Oasis family. That's what I love about the family of God. It's made up of such incredible diversity, people from a variety of backgrounds, different job occupations. I mean, it's just amazing. You have such a variety of people in God's house and it's an awesome place to be. So thank you for being here today. We're starting a new series today called Happy in the Holidays. And you might think it's a little early. We're not quite there yet. Why are we going holidays already? Well, we wanna prepare you for the holidays. We wanna get you a couple of weeks head start before holiday season kicks in so that you can be sure you stay happy in the holidays. During the holiday season, all kinds of crazy can happen, right? You see family members you don't wanna see sometimes. Uh, stuff starts to creep up, like, no, or you start spending money you don't have, and all of a sudden you feel like, I am not very happy in the holidays. So we're, our goal for this series is to make sure you stay happy in the holidays, and we're able to walk through this season together, joy-filled, knowing that God is for us. Uh, last week's message, if you were not here, I really want to encourage you to go to our website and watch it. Listen to it again while you're driving, however you need to do. It was a powerful message if you had ears to hear what God was speaking last Sunday. But something that Joey said last Sunday has been sticking with me all week long. And he was talking about the scripture when Jesus said, uh, Jesus said that if these signs will accompany those that believe, which is you and me. If we're believers in Jesus, there are signs that should accompany us and should accompany the way that we live. He said, in my name, they'll drive out demons, they'll speak in new tongues, they'll pick up snakes with their hands, and, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They'll place their hands on sick people and they will get well. 
And so last week, Joy was sharing out of that scripture that that should be our platform, not our plateau. As believers, we should all live from that place, that signs, wonders, and miracles follow us, like that's the normal thing in a believer's life. But in, in church world right now, that's not the normal way. It, that, that becomes the plateau. That's where we want to get to. And so my challenge to us and to myself is to live from that platform, that I'm a person that signs, wonders, and miracles always follow me. It's not something I'm trying to work towards. It's something that I'm already at. And so as I was thinking about that this whole week long, I've been challenged in this area of realizing that the miracles that Jesus did here on this earth, he told us that he had to leave. He's got to go back to his father. And he said, I'm going to leave you with the Holy Spirit. So you're going to have the gift of the Holy Spirit living inside of you. And he said, greater things are you going to do than he did when he was here on this earth. And so if he's giving us this promise that we're going to do greater things than he did, I mean, then, then it's limitless to what we can do in the name of Jesus. So you and I have the ability then to really actually believe God to do amazing things in our lives because he said he'll do greater things. So if you can kind of go through all the stories that you know about Jesus and the miracles that you know that he performed and the provision that he brought about in crazy ways when he would cast out devils and do all these things, he said, he said you're gonna do greater things than that. And so if what you're facing today is under the banner of what he's already done, then you have to know that it's a no-brainer that you can believe God for that to already be done. Because he said you're going to do even greater things than that. Think about this scripture in John chapter 14. Jesus said, I, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing, and they will do even greater things than these I'm going to my Father. He is empowering us to do great things. One of my favorite passages is at the end of John. It's John chapter 21. It's just kind of a random scripture, but I just love it so much. It says, Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose not even the whole world would have enough room for the books that would be written. I love that scripture because it leaves your mind full of imagination. What else did Jesus do? We know what the word tells us that he did, but oh my gosh, what else did he do? You have to remember, Jesus rose from the dead. So if your problem, if you think your problem is insurmountable, Jesus rose from the dead. But he said, you're gonna do greater things than he did. So that means nothing we face is insurmountable. If he's given us this green light, you guys, in my name, you're gonna do all of these things and you're gonna do greater things than I did on this earth in my name, then your problem is insurmountable. Nothing that we face works against us. Everything we face has to work for us. So I wanna challenge you with that today. I've been challenging myself with that this week in different areas that I'm believing God to bring healing in certain areas and different things that I'm believing God to do. I, I go, okay, well, okay, Jesus healed in the scriptures. I know he did that. He provided in the scriptures. I know he did that. He rose from the dead. I know he did that. He, the scripture says there's more things he did that we don't even know about. So then that has to become my platform. That's where I have to start from. That's not where I arrive. That's where I start from. So you and I as believers have to be people that are so filled with the Holy Spirit that we know that signs, wonders, and miracles are following us because we believe in him and we're people that activate that faith. We don't just shy away because um, the culture tells us to shy away or to keep quiet or whatever. No, we, we are who we are and either we are believers in Jesus and we believe his word 100% or we don't. There's really not a middle ground in this walk with Jesus. We either believe the word of God or we don't believe the word of God. We don't pick and choose out of his word what we want to believe to be true. We believe him or we don't believe him. So I want to encourage you and I to be people that fan that flame that's already been deposited within you. There is so much greatness on the inside of each and every one of us. And it saddens my heart to walk around this city and see people that live beneath their dignity because nobody has to. Nobody has to live less than what they're called to live apart to. So many people live their lives with a cap on and we live life under that cap and we keep ourselves subdued and we keep ourselves in this level of mediocrity that you're not called to live in. You and I are not meant to be mediocre people. We're meant to be world changers. We're meant to stir up some stuff. <laughs> We're meant to do a whole lot of good in a whole lot of mess. And we live in a whole lot of mess, especially in the state of California. We live in a whole lot of mess right now. But you and I have the ability to be change agents. We don't have to believe what the culture tells us to believe. We don't have to believe what the media wants us to believe. We can believe what the word of God says and we'll believe what it says and we'll do what it says and signs and wonders will follow us, those that believe. Do I have any believers in the room this morning? I don't know, you're kind of quiet. You're kind of quiet. I wanna encourage you guys, stir up the Holy Spirit inside of you. He's in you, take that cap off. 
gosh, you just can't imagine what your life will be like. You can't imagine what your life will be like when you allow the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do in your life. And we keep, stop suppressing him and keeping God boxed. No, God, you're not gonna operate that way in my life. No, I'm not gonna do that. No, you're not gonna say that through me, God. No, I'm not gonna approach that person. No, I can't do that. No, I couldn't possibly go to church today. No, I can't possibly reach that person today. Stop squashing him. There's so much greatness on the inside of you, but you don't even open up the box for him to come out. It's like there's this, you, there's this bubbling inside of so many of you. I just sense that in my heart that there's, there's purpose inside of you that's trying to come out, but you're not letting it out. I don't know what you're afraid of, but you're afraid of something. But I wanna challenge you today. Take the limits off of your life and watch God do amazing things. If you're tired of living mediocre, mediocrity, don't live in mediocrity anymore. If you're tired of living an average life, stop living an average life. There's so much more for you and I. Signs, wonders, and miracles get to follow us. Signs, wonders, and miracles get to follow us. Look at your neighbor and say, signs, wonders, and miracles get to follow me. What, what, what's that behind me? Oh, that's just a sign, a wonder, and a miracle. Come on, you guys. You are a sign, a wonder, and a miracle. That you're alive, that you're functioning, you're a sign, you're a wonder, you're a miracle. Man, there's something powerful inside of us. And my prayer, my heart's desire for you, for me, for my family is, oh God, would we know it? that we are amazing individuals because of Jesus Christ, that we are made in his image, that there's nothing that we cannot do. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Nothing's too hard for him. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen. We're so, so grateful for you. If we're grateful for this amazing family. You, you are such giving people, you guys. I am so amazed at what you've been able to do for the orphanage. You guys... Uh, Bishop Ansel has only been in Africa maybe a week and a half, and there's already so much work he has already started doing. Um, here's our graphic where we're at, you guys. We are uh, at $148,000 raised. That is pretty amazing. You guys are amazing people. We've got a couple of photos for you to show you the progress so far. It's already, literally, a week and a half Bishop's been there. We're already on the ground. They're already doing demolition, tearing stuff up, taking apart buildings. It's pretty, pretty remarkable. There you go. That's where the orphanage is going to start from. It's awesome, you guys. It's already happening. So we wanted to show you that. We want to keep bringing you progress and updates as it happens. This is, this is just a huge step of faith that you guys are on this journey with us. And so we are so grateful from our hearts. Oh, my gosh. We're so grateful for you believing in this wonderful wonderful mission. If you'd like to give, of course, we're still trying to get to our goal. We're almost there. We believe we're going to get there and exceed it. But again, we're already starting. We're not waiting for it to come in. We're starting, stepping out by faith. So thank you so much. You're such a giving congregation. You really, really are. I want to get you a couple of announcements, and then we're going to honor God with our giving today so you can prepare your envelope if you'd like to. We offer store the grain to our church family, but we do need you to use an envelope for your giving so we can make sure to get you the information for store the grain. Store the grain is groceries that are made available just to our Oasis family every Friday at the city center. Um, it's good groceries, good stuff. We wanna try and take some of the pressure off you guys because of this crazy inflation we live under. But Store the Grain was designed for you, for our church family, but it's also designed for you, if you don't need it, to take it and share the love with somebody else. So um, it's available for you Fridays at the City Center. Uh, make sure you use that envelope for giving. But a couple of quick announcements. Friends giving for our teenagers. Do I have any young people in the house? Come on. I know we do. Friendsgiving is this Thursday at 5 p.m. for your student. If you are a teenager and you'd like to sign up or you're a parent, you want to sign your teenager up, stop by uh, Jessica's booth out there. She'll get you signed up. You have to sign up for it. We have to have your uh, information to get you signed up. That's going to be awesome for our teenagers. It's a free event. Lots of good stuff. Saturday is our Thanksgiving Day distribution. That is right out here in our parking lot. We will have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cars lined up starting at probably 5 a.m. for this event. So we need a lot of help. If you would like to come and just help us uh, pack food, distribute food, we need help with signing people up. There's so much to be done. Stop by and see Jessica on your way out at the volunteer table. We need a lot of help for this event. And then lastly, family night is this Tuesday at the city center. We've got adult Bible study. We've got teenagers. We've got kids. Everything is there for you is our last one before we close for the holidays uh, for, for family night. So make sure you stop over for that. Let's honor God with our giving. Ecclesiastes 5.10 says, those who love money will never have enough. Isn't that the truth? How meaningless to think that wealth brings happiness. 
We know that it doesn't. The world wants you to think that it does. It does not. Um, wealth does not bring us happiness, but God is such a great God that he is so powerful to provide you wealth when you need wealth. He's a good God. He's an abundant God. He promises us in Proverbs 11 that the generous will prosper, that when you refresh others, you yourself will be refreshed. So I want to encourage you today as you sow your seed, you give your tithe, your offering. If you're giving to Africa, I want you to attach refreshment to that. Say, God, your word promises I'm going to be refreshed. I'm going to give. I need some refreshment today. Whatever area of your life you need God to refresh, believe for him to do that as you sow your seed. He'll do it. His word says he will. He will do it. We believe. We believe God's word. So let's pray over this today. Father, I thank you for the tithe and the offering coming into your house. God, we thank you for Africa. We thank you for what's come in so far for Africa. Lord, I thank you that you are uh, giving us wisdom to build this orphanage, to house your children, to provide them a safe place. God, we're just so grateful for the opportunity to do this, that you've entrusted Oasis Church to build this orphanage. I thank you. You're gonna provide everything that we have need of to continue the job. Lord, thank you for the children that are already being prepared to be a part of this great, great work. God, I just thank you for it. I thank you for each person in this room. Lord, I thank you for the sacrifice of resource that they have given for Africa. I thank you for the sacrifice of resource they give every time they give the tithe and their offering out of our obedience to your word. God, we give this back to you. It doesn't belong to us. And so we give it back to you. We thank you for being a God that provides every single need. You provide from your riches, your word says, not from ours. You provide from your riches and you've got everything that we have need of. So I just pray today that everybody in this room would receive something from your riches today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you this morning as you give. Looking for perfection So there's no need in me pretending I'll give you everything I'll give you everything You deserve my full attention Nothing less than my devotion Lord speak to me and I will listen and I'll give you everything I'll give you
this one. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Oh, I hear you. Come on. I live for you. Have your way in me, Father. Have your way. Sing it again. Lord, I give you. Lord, I give you my heart. Yeah. I give you my soul. I live for you, God. I live for you. Have a breath that I take. Oh, I give it back. treasure chests, chests, and we've given our offerings this morning. Right now in this moment, right even those that you're watching by way of internet, wherever you are, if that's your heart cry this morning, we just want you to give him your heart. to him. I live for you. Every breath, every breath, every breath you allow me to take, oh God. I live and breathe in you, yeah. Give you my soul. Have a mind. 
much different perspective than we do. Yeah. We trust you, we trust you, we trust you, we trust you, we trust you. Come on, come on right where you are. Come on right now. Fill us again, oh God. Fill us again, oh God. More of your power, more of your spirit, more of you, Father. It's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh God, standing in the need, yeah. have your way. Come on, one more time, but only sing it if you mean it now. Come on, to him, to him. time and that's it. Lord, I give you my heart. Come on. I give you my soul, God. Live for you alone. Every breath that I take. From the rising of the sun up to the setting of the same. Oh God, be glorified in our lives. Yeah, yeah. Have your way in me. Have your way in me, Lord. Have your way in me. Sing that end. Lord. Oh, come on, we lift up our hands. We lift up our hearts right now. Sing us, lift it up one more time. Lift it up. Sing it a little bit higher. Come on. Have your way. Come on. Come on, even in the hard thing, God. When we're in the valley low. When we're sick, when we're down, Father, it doesn't even matter anymore. We just say, have your way, have your way, have your way. We love you, oh God, and even more than that, we trust you, we trust you, we trust you, we trust you, we trust you. So when the lights go down and no one's around, we want you to have your way. Move us out of the way. We want you to have your way. Come on, come on. Come on, last time. Have your way, have your way, Father. Come on, let him speak to your heart. Let him speak to your heart now. Right where you are, let him speak. Let him speak. She can't go over your side. Yeah. Lord, have your way, have your way. Have your way, oh Lord. Have your way. Father, thank you this morning for this wonderful worship. Thank you for the offerings, Lord, that we've given to you with our hearts, our soul, our mind, our resources. Lord, these offerings are not in vain. They're not out of our own imagination. They're out of a heart that wants what you want. Over our homes, our health, our emotions, our mental state, our emotional, our physical, our generations that are coming after us. We want what you want. And that's why we're here and that's why we're watching. So Father, as we go forward today to hear your word, let us lean in to what the Spirit says and let us apply it to our life. And let us leave here today changed, not because we've met with a man, but God, we've had an encounter with you. In Jesus' name. And if you'd agree with all of that, would you give God a round of applause in his house? That's all you're saying is have your way. Have your way. Now, before you sit down, turn to the neighbor. If you're already sitting, turn to the neighbor and say you're good looking and turn to the other one and say you've lost weight and you're amazing. And add in there some awesome things about them. But we're thankful that you're here. And 
I want you to give the worship team a round of applause. Thank you so much, worship team. Amazing, amazing. And again, thank all of you for being here today, those of you watching and honoring God by being with us today. We hope you have a great week, but also thank you for honoring the Lord with your tithes and offerings, supporting the ministry. I do want to share uh, and underscore what Jennifer said about this week. It's a busy week for, for helping people all throughout our community. Young people, if you haven't signed up yet, I want you to sign up for that uh, that wonderful thing on Thursday night. We're gonna bless the students uh, of here in the city center, our kids. We're gonna give them all courses, meal, and we're gonna bless their socks off. So I want you to make sure you sign up for that. Also, we need lots of help this week. We have Store the Grain on Friday. Saturday, we have a massive distribution. We have 1,000 plus turkeys, and we can use one more turkey. That means you, sir. We could use you. But we are giving away just blessings and blessings and blessings. I hate to use the word giving away. Nothing's free. There's no free lunch. We get nothing for free. We pay for everything. So it's not like we get it for free. We get nonsense. We supernaturally get stuff. We supernaturally pay for stuff. And you're supernaturally going to get involved in the stuff in Jesus' name to give it out. That's what it is. It's not free. There's nothing. There's no free lunch. I just, I got to stop using the dirt. We're, you know, it cost them. I want to go by every car we give them. It cost us something. So when you take it, receive it in Jesus' name. It cost a lot, but we need a lot of help for this week because it'll be a blessing. Also, if you haven't uh, participated in Store the Grain, we really encourage you to, and here's why. Because a lot of people say, well, I'm so blessed. God's blessed me. I don't need it. But what I would encourage you with is I would encourage to share the love. Because if you've ever had a Jehovah Witness come to your door, and I have in the past, what happens when a Jehovah Witness came to your door? You hide. They have nothing good to give, and not, not in my opinion. I mean, they, they're selling a ticket on a plane that's absolutely full. 144,000 going to heaven. How many people live in Stockton? 300,000. You're selling a ticket that nobody can get on. We can't get on your ticket. So my point is, if that comes to my door, I'm not answering the door, or I just yell in tongues the whole time, and I open up the door. Yeah, nah, 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 and I just speak in tongues and get them on. But my point is that, yeah, I do that. But my point is... I have done that before, actually. I'm embarrassed to tell you, I did do that. But I share that to say what you can do with Operation Store the Grain, there's no free lunch. It's not free food that we're giving out. It costs us a lot. But what you could do, you can share that love, receive the Store the Grain, and then ask the Holy Spirit who you need to bless with it. And then go to the family member, go to the neighbor, go to the coworker, and give it to them in Jesus' name. Say, hey, this is for you. And this is for you because God wanted, God put you on my heart to bless you with it. And they'll say, oh, I don't need it. And just give it to them. Use what you have to see what God can do in that life. And you watch what they'll do. They'll say, hey, what church you go to? And you get to tell them, Oasis Church, you should see the pastor. Hey, he's amazing. His wife is beautiful with or without heels. She made the brownies, and I got to tell you, you guys should get here between. You guys come so late. It's appalling. But you, we start the service like 10 of you, and then you all come in like 30 minutes in. But what, what you should do is get here between the services because all the baking that Jennifer does, it gets absolutely decimated between the first and second service. And she made TKO brownies that would knock the hell out of you. They were so good. I mean, I my tongue hit the back of my brain and knocked it out. It was so good. I'm like, oh my God. And they got sold out because you guys come so late, you don't get it. But that's something for you to be blessed by as well. All right, you ready for the word this morning? All two of you, the rest of you, you're in, buckle up. Psalms, one, thank you. Psalms 146, Psalms 146. I'm gonna read one verse of passage of scripture today. And I want you to lean in, stop talking to your neighbor, and I want you to lean in to what I'm going to share with you today because I want you to get what God wants to download to us today about being happy in the holidays. We drew this picture and Kyler uh, made this picture and did a phenomenal job because I think it brings us back. Yeah, they like Kyler. Santa's coming back too, I heard Kyler. But what this picture reminds me of, of a day of nostalgia. It reminds me of a day that would make you smile. 
Now, if we had to put this picture nowadays, there would be somebody that would slam that fur coat with blood and scream at them. Somebody would steal the groceries before they got put in the car. And somebody would tell that little boy that he could be something else and go there and slice him up. The point is, we're living in a difficult time. I said that not to make you go, oh man, now I'm not thinking properly. I said that to say, you can be happy in spite of what you're going through. In spite of what this world has done, what has happened, who runs the government, who runs the state, you can be happy instead of what's going on in your home, what's going on in your body. In Psalms 146, it says these words, verse 5, it tells us something amazing. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Can we read it together, family? Let's read it out loud. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. I'm going to talk to you today a message called happiness is a choice. Happiness is a choice. I've already prayed, so let's get after it. All right, you ready? All right, give the Lord one more hand clap this morning because you need to wake up. You need to stir you up. I'm prolonging this because I want you to lean in and I'm prolonging this topic a little bit and, and drawing it out somewhat because I want you to understand that happiness is a choice. The most common question that I get asked in ministry is people have asked me, well, how can I find true and lasting happiness? How can I have happiness that the world can't take it away and what comes my way can't shake my happiness? The Word of God shows us how to be happy in spite of what we're going through. So think about what I've just said and the most common question that's asked, how can I be happy? Where can I find the happiness when I'm going through something? Battling through a loneliness of being depressed. Battling through going through a divorce. How can I be happy in spite of what I'm battling with my addictions, whether it's drugs or alcohol or something else? The question about how can I have happiness when abuse has come to my body or my mind or my mental state? The question how I've been rejected by my father or by my mother. How can I truly find happiness it pours out of the mouth of so many people that are desperately searching for hope, only for hope to elude them because I truly believe they put their happiness in the wrong things. No greater joy and achievement to find out what God wants for your life and then do that. You can stop now. Thank you, brother. I want you to think about something today because what is happiness? And I think that this is really important. And here's what I would tell you. If I'm going to define happiness for us, I would say happiness is the fragrance of an obedient life. It's the fragrance of an obedient life. I say that because remember they had a song back in the day that said, ooh, that smell. Some of you old school rockers remember, ooh, that smell. And they something about the smell. How about the smell that some people have? I used to travel a whole lot before I became a pastor. And I used to go and they would have me as a minister. I'd speak in churches and conventions all over uh, different parts of America and other countries. But what I would do is most of the time, because, you know, they didn't have the resources to put you in a hotel. So you'd stay at a home, a pastor's home or somebody's home. And I would always, when I would come home, if I had put my clothes in the particular home's closet or something, when I would come home, Jennifer would always say, hey, that is, it was, something smells different. And that home home would have a distinct smell, and I called it family smell. Every home has a distinct family smell. You cook something in your home that you and the family are used to, and somebody else comes up in that home. How many know it has a distinct smell about it? The fragrance is important when you're dealing with identity. I think that's important because most Christians are not happy because they're not operating in authority because they do not know their identity. And the fragrance of happiness is an obedient life. It's an obedient life. The fragrance that would come off of my family smell, that I find out what God wants, and I do that. Jesus Christ, you have to know something about him today. He's in the happiness business. He ordained happiness by performing his first miracle, not by raising Lazarus from the dead. Not by causing the leper's skin to be smooth as baby's flesh. Not by causing the, the issue of blood with the woman that had been battling for many years to be healed and made whole. He performed his first miracle at the wedding feast of Canaan and Galilee. 
And he did it by turning the water into wine. Where are my Holy Ghost uh, uh, winos at? Don't answer right now. But he turned the water into wine because it was a celebration of joy. It was a celebration of joy. And do you know what happened when he did it? The Pharisees, the religious stuff shirts of their day, they got angry. They got upset because to them, Jesus performed that miracle at the wrong time. The Pharisees of your day, the stuff shirt religious people, will always get upset with people that live in true happiness because their fragrance is out of what God wants them to do, and they do that in spite of what they go through. And the facts are in. If you're a Christian and you're not happy, you're not like Jesus. If you got a face that looks like a poison bulldog, your resting face needs to be checked, sir. You ever see somebody's resting face and it's really bad? I often look at my resting face. I even ask Jennifer, hey, just, just, hey, just help me out. Help a brother out. When the resting face looks bad, help me. Just give me a nudge and say, resting face. Some people's RF looks like it's soured in lemon juice. Baptize for sure. We got to help you with your resting face. Because if your face looks like a reprint of the book of Lamentations, That's a bad advertisement in the kingdom of God. Jesus gave us three cheers. He gave it from the tavern, not the uh, the tabernacle, not the tavern. And he said, be of good cheer, I've overcame the world. Be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven. Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. When the angels sang over Bethlehem's manger, their song was joy to the world. The Lord has come. This gospel begins with a song and it ends with a song. Yes, Christianity has its discipline. Yes, we have our trials and tribulations. But if we lose our joy, if we lose our God-given happiness, we've lost our Christian identity. When Christ is the Lord of your life, friend, you can walk through the water and the water won't drown you. You can walk through the fire and the fire won't burn you. Because if God be for you, Who can be against you? Can you put your hands together and thank God for walking you through this thing? Now, let me just ask you that because the apostle Paul commanded the church to do something. Now, a church is not a building with four walls, brick and mortar with a name on the front of it. A a church is not a denomination nor a building. A church is a person. It's an individual human being that operates in the kingdom. God commanded the church through the apostle Paul, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. What he's saying, in effect, is happiness is a choice. Say it with me. Happiness is a choice. So what do you want out of life? When you ask people that common question, they say, hey, man, I just want to be happy. What do you mean by happy? What is happiness for you? If I could sit down one-on-one with each of you today and say, hey, what would it take to make you completely happy? Could you really tell me? Are you really happy? If so, why? And if not, why not? What change in your life would make you completely happy? If you arrive to where you're going, are you going to be happy when you get there? You need to look at those people who have given their soul to go where you think you want to go and then find out if they're happy when they got there. We have friends, we have family members that are unhappy, they're unfulfilled, and we try to step in, create some type of happiness for them. But understand, you cannot give what you do not have. Happiness is an inside story. It begins inside of us. It's not your position that makes you happy. It's your disposition that makes you happy. The Apostle Paul was far happier singing in the jail at Philippi in the midnight hour with his back split wide open than many of you in this room and certainly most of you watching. So it tells me it's not where we are that makes us happy. It's what we are that makes us happy. And it really comes when we stop worrying about all the troubles we have and we flip the script and we start to thank God for the trouble we don't have because worrying is a misuse of your imagination. I want to say that again because this side looks a little more smarter than that side. Worrying is a misuse of your imagination. You have to understand your imagination was given by God. 
It's given for you to accomplish your dreams and visions and for God to pour out his spirit on your life. And that worry is a misuse of a God-given imagination. Imagination is like puzzle pieces that put on a canvas. And as you're building that puzzle piece, God starts to orchestrate the pieces that need to go into place. And sometimes the puzzle pieces have some things that you don't particularly like, but you can't see the whole picture being made because it's a divine puzzle from God. And that imagination that's God-driven and God God given points to you to your divine destiny and it points you to your divine destination but when you misuse that imagination it starts to worry it starts to look at things or what's wrong instead of focusing on what God does right when you misuse that imagination the devil will put fear on you the devil will put torment on you the devil will put envy on you the devil will put sarcasm on you the devil will stop telling you what you're not and what you'll never become and God has to scream in your ear get out of the depth of despair and misery square up your shoulders lift your hand live love and be happy I'm the God of the universe and I can protect you but you've got to rejoice by choice you've got to understand that God has something for us the 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 world cannot give it and it cannot take away but when I say that you have to realize there's a difference between happiness that we're talking about in the world and what God sees as happiness. Now, if I can give it to you simplistically, I would give you this definition of happiness. It comes from the Anglo-Saxon word hap, where we get chance or happenstance. So if we're talking about happiness, most of us understand happiness is based upon chance or what happens to you. And if your definition of happiness is based upon what happens to you, then nobody in this room, this handsome bald amigo included, will be happy because I cannot control what happens to me. I can only control what happens in me. So if we're talking about happiness of the world, happy in the holiday, then my happiness will be dependent on you giving me an awesome gift and then you giving me something else that I take and receive and then something else I'm, I'm rejecting and letting go because that's a gift as well. How many, of, how many of you know some people are gifted when they come into your life? Other people are gifted when they leave your life. Now, I'm just preaching better than your amen, but you get my point. Some people are blessed when they're coming in and some people, God bless them, they're great going out. But there's something about, if we're talking about happiness based upon chance, Nobody in this room or watching could be happy because we can't determine what happens to us or comes our way. We can't navigate the water. We can't tell the water what it's going to do. We can only adjust the sail. So think about that. So happiness in the secular sense is depending on what happens to you. And if you're captured by that essence of happiness being only what comes to you and how you feel, you will never be happy. But God's word is not that. It's makarios. And this means supremely blessed by God in every area, no matter what happens. This is a different understanding of what God wants his people to live in. This is a different realm of revelation that I believe God wants Oasis Church to walk in and every one of you walk in because you represent God's church and God's kingdom. I'm telling you that because it's there through a storm of life. It's there through the pain of a divorce. It's there through difficulty and situations and circumstances that are out of your control. It endures through every agony. It endures through every bit of pain. It endures through what you're going through because it's not a matter of what you're going through. It's a matter of what you're going to. You belong in the palace with the king. It doesn't depend on what happens. In other words, it's there regardless of what happens. You see the difference this morning. It's not dependent on what happens. God's happiness is rock solid regardless of what happens. But it's not found in the abundance of things. Jesus told us that. The Bible declares that. Life does not consist about the abundance of things. I read where one of these multi-billionaires lost like $80 billion over a stock exchange. He, he lost something that was, he was $120 billion. Now he's at $40 billion. I'm like, poor him. And he's whining about how he lost. I'm like, you got $41 billion. There's, there's something about understanding. It's not the, about the abundance of things. There's a difference between making a living and having a great life. You have to know the difference between the two. And happiness is not having an untroubled life. Often we think happiness is determined whether I'm, I'm going through trouble or not. If I'm not going through trouble, I could be, I guess I'm happy. But if I'm going through trouble, I'm not going to be happy. 
Happiness is not a stress-free life. I'm thinking about that a lot today because I know many of you are battling through some troubled waters. You're battling through some circumstances that are beyond your capacity to understand, let alone control. The Bible says, listen to these words from the scripture. The Bible says, all who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. I know that's not something we want to put on the refrigerator. We put a freeze in 320, exceedingly, abundantly, above all, we can ask, think, dream, or imagine. And then we'll say, hey, chicken, yay. But that's not the scriptures we like to quote. The Bible says, think it not strange, the fiery trial you're going through. Some strange thing has happened. I know that's not on the refrigerator either, but that's a Bible verse that Christians need to understand. The Christian life is not a stress-free life. King David, most, the most beautiful psalms he ever writ, wrote, excuse me, the most beautiful psalms he ever wrote were from a cave. A cave I had the privilege to be at many times in Israel. Those caves where he was hiding, running from King Saul, a demonized madman, because Samuel had appointed him king of Israel, and Saul knew that David was the rightful king and wanted to kill him because of it. Think about that. Daniel was captured, uh, a captured uh, individual under Babylon, which is modern-day Iraq. He was taken away from his family. Daniel, the prophet, many of you know his writing in the book of Daniel, but he was taken away from his loved ones, from his family. He was put inside a foreign land. If you've been taken away from your country, from your people, from your loved ones, it'll wipe the smile right off your face. But listen to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 14. But even if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are you. Oh, my gosh. That means I'm not dependent upon what I'm going through. I'm supremely blessed by God regardless of what I'm going through. But you have to realize happiness is not getting what you want. Have you ever noticed the more you, you get what you want, the less you want what you got? Am I the only one that thinks that way? It's true. It's like the guy, he was, had his new job at the, at the mental institution, and he's going from room to room, exploring the place, and as he was going from place to place, he went to the first room, and it was a guy sitting in a rocking chair just rocking back and forth, and all the guy would say in the room was, Lulu, Lulu, Lulu. He said to the attendant, he said, what's going on with that guy? He said, I don't know. We received him last night. He came in, and all he does is sit all day in the rocking chair back and forth saying, Lulu, I guess he was dating a girl named Lulu. And it, and it broke his heart. She broke up with him. He says, that's crazy. He went to the third floor. This was the padded area. There was a guy on the third floor all by himself in the padded room, eyes bulging out, foaming at the mouth, screaming, Lulu, Lulu, Lulu. He said, what's wrong with that guy? He said, well, he married Lulu. Sometimes you'll get what you want and you won't like what you gotten. That's a little seasoned joke, by the way. And I had told that joke some time ago at another church as I was preaching at. And I had a guy, this is a true story. He came up to me and says, hey, good message, Joey. I want you to meet my wife. Lulu. <laughs> it's true. I'm like, my joke was really for you, man. But I want you to think about that because it's not really getting what we want. So how can I have happiness right now? And here's the question. Are you ready for it? Is it unrealistic for me to expect that I can be happy most of the time? Most of us think it's unrealistic for me to be happy in the holiday or any other day because of what I'm going through or currently battling. Since our lives are in such a constant struggle, is it possible for me to have a deep-seated, continual happiness or do I have to have this short-lived kind of ecstatic experiences where I'm, I've got endorphins one minute and the next minute I'm down in the dumps, I'm old sad sack the next? Or can I truly be happy in spite of? Yes, I believe long-lasting, deep-rooted, personal happiness can be achieved through a principle of the Word of God. But it demands something. The miracle that you're asking for demands two parts, your part and God's part. And what this demands to be happy is requires action. Action on your part. That's why it's a choice. Your destiny swings on the hinges of your next decision. And that's a choice that every human being makes each and every day. And it demands action. If you want something you've never had, you must do something you've never done. And for some of you, it means take action and authority over your life. Many people don't take authority over their life because they don't know their identity. 
And because they don't know their identity, they cap their life, they stifle their life, they live less than, and they say, well, it's because I was raised this way, or it's because I live where I live, it's because of my education, it's because of what I've went through, it's because of my divorce, it's because of my background, it's because I was raised this way, and my ethnicity says this, and my upbringing says that, yada, 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 nada, nada, nada. It's an absolute joke. You and I have an opportunity every single day to choose what we become. And today is the day the Lord has made. I shall rejoice in this day and be glad in it. But it demands action. And you create that action by renewing your mind. Because the world that's within you creates the world that's around you. And I say that because we do the opposite. We let the world around us dictate and create the world that's within us. I'm talking to some of you mamas right now. I'm talking to some of you young men right now who are not on fire for God yet because you've let the world around you dictate the world that's within you. And you need to flip the script. You need to dictate to it, not let it dictate to you. You need to tell it this is where it needs to go and not let it happen the opposite way. You've got to learn to change your thinking. You change your thinking by getting a better attitude. How many know teenagers can have sometimes a nasty attitude? Any any parent? of teenagers they can have a nasty attitude and then by a flip of the switch they can be up one minute and down the next God wants his children not being up one minute and down the next continually believing God at his word trusting in him no matter what comes your way believing the promises every one of them are yes and amen but it demands change that's why the Bible says whatever things are lovely whatever things of good report whatever things are praiseworthy Think upon those things because this is found only in hope. I don't know about you, but I'm certainly let down by a lot of things this day and age. A lot of things have let me down. I don't know about you, but me personally, you can have your own decisions and what you want to do. But a lot of things personally have let me down with our government, our environments, things that we're doing. Certain people that say they're going to fix this thing and they do the opposite. And they let this thing run rampant because it's a complex where they're making money off it. And you see all the right being wrong and the wrong being right. And it just ticks you right off. Anybody with me? A few of you are ticked off. Let's storm the gates. My happiness cannot be found in things. It has to be found in him. Because that's why the scripture as Pastor Ty comes and we close. That's why happiness is found in hope. No longer people are hoping for the best. They're just hoping to avoid the worst. It's true. And happiness is found in hope. I've often talked to people. They say, well, I don't want to hope for anything. Do you know Buddhism? They don't want you to believe in hope. They think hope is something to be avoided and shunned. In the Old Testament, in in the old days before the Testaments were written, they thought hope is something to be absolutely not even thought about. And here comes God on the scene through his son Jesus, and he tells you and I what we're to put our our, our hope in and, and put it in him because hope is not in something. Hope is in someone. And there's a world of difference between that because no longer people are are looking for this thing or that thing. They put their hope in the wrong things. So they've lost hope. Are they, are they looking for false hope or are they have no hope? And think about what's happening in our society today. People are living life with no hope. No hope that God is the God of the universe. No hope that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. They refuse to believe in that hope. Think about the false hopes, putting their faith and trust in other things, putting it in other people, political affiliations, different things, only to be let down over and over and over again. But what does hope mean? Psalms 146, our passage this morning, I'll read it again. Happy, supremely blessed is he who has God as his hope, whose hope is in the Lord. The Bible tells you and I to hope in God. May the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace so that you overflow with hope. Oh, God wants you absolutely drunk, not in Thunderbird. He turned the water in the wine. He did it again. No, you did it when you went to the liquor store. The wino doesn't go to the liquor store to read the labels. I'm just looking at the labels. Hmm. 
seven carbs. I think I'll get the light malt liquor. There's something to be said about overflow of good things. I can't tell you everything we overflow in because the doors would be filled with people wanting stuff. And what I have to do is throttle back not to tell you all the stuff that God has for you, but that he has the ultimate thing, which is Jesus for you. And the other things flow out of that. That's why I told you earlier, it ticks me off when things think it's free. Nothing's free, no free lunch, man. Nothing's free we've ever given. Our families had sacrificed for decades not to give you free stuff, to show you the love of God. My point in that is, what do you have your hope in? Is it in false hope? Or maybe you're operating in no hope. But I'm here today to tell you about a real hope. Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us about the overflow of that real hope. God says, I got plans for you. I got plans to prosper you. Plans not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a bright future. That's God's way of saying to you, I got you. And I got your back. It's found in hope. Jesus is presented as the blessed hope. The Bible calls him the hope of glory. Hope generates enthusiasm. It generates excitement. It produces joy. Joy that the world cannot give and the world cannot take away. Hope produces a song in the midnight hour. The Bible says we rejoice in the hope of the glory of our God. And give me the first promise. First promise wasn't given in the New Testament. The first promise of God was given in Genesis. When the seed of the woman would crush the head of the serpent, that tells you and I, the hope that we have is eternal. Satan is a defeated foe. He is under our feet. That's hope, ladies and gentlemen. That's hope. It's hope. The last recorded promise is not in Genesis. It's in Revelation. And it's Revelation 22, verse 20. And he says, I'm coming soon. Coming soon. My, my reward is with me. Mm. A lot of Christians are so fearful of seeing God, they reject to live a fullness of the life on this earth because they're fearful of something they don't know. You wouldn't be fearful of a loved one that you held near and dear to your heart. You'd want to desperately see them. I want to desperately see my mother who has passed away because I loved her with all my heart. I want to see my daddy again because I desperately loved him with all of my heart. I want to see them again because I love them. I want to see my children every day because I love them, even though they can be jerks. Teenagers. I want to see my beautiful wife every day because she makes me food. And I love her, of course. Of course. He says, I'm coming soon. That shouldn't put Christians on high alert of being scared. Oh my God, I don't want to die in my sin. I'm scared. Come on, you got to grow up. You got to grow up beyond that. It should put us in a wonderful awe. I want to see my dearest loved one. I want to see him, the one I love, the one I worship. The one that gave me eternal life. The one that told me when I was a young Christian, I'm never leaving you. I'm never forsaking you. The one who told me, I'll stand with you, you'll have no contenders. The one who told me, I'm breaking the generational curse over you and your family. The one who told me, build me a house and honor me. I long to see him face to face. My waiting on him is not out of being fearful or thinking the world has gone to hell in a handbasket. My desperate need to see him is birthed out of love. It's birthed out of I love him. And I want to see him. And if that's not you, that's because you've got false hope. It's false hope because it's in religion. And religion says, hey, you do this, you're going to get that. You do this, you're going to get that. Or maybe you're operating in no hope. And that's why you just kind of kind of meander through life because you just think it's based upon what happens to you. Come and go. It's karma. It's karma. I'm saying this to you. 
you can have real hope today. Hope that's steadfast and sure. But you'll never rise higher than the hope that's in your heart. And if you don't put Jesus at the forefront of that heart, you'll never rise higher. I think that's what Jennifer was saying earlier. That's really what she was saying to us today through the word of the Lord. You'll never rise higher. You'll be capped until you own this thing. I've been telling our staff on Tuesdays about the difference between management and ownership, that we're not to manage people. We are to own what God has instilled with us, our lives, our, our hell, everything. We're to own that thing. In other words, we're to take ownership, not in a negative, evil way, a way of overwhelming care, that I'm to own it. I say that to you today. Maybe it's time that you stop managing the thing and you own it. You own it. There's a sphere of influence that only you have. Only you have. So maybe it's time that you stop, well, I'm just gonna manage or I'm just gonna wait for something else. And maybe you take ownership of it and say, no, God's calling me to do that. You know, you pastor people, I never will have the ability or the privilege to pastor. And the reason you don't is because you don't own it. You just manage. And the problem with managing things, when you manage, when things don't go your way, you quit. When you own something, you know there's no quitting. And see, that's the difference I feel with most people today. That you're not owning what God has given you. And you need to learn to be happy in spite of and own it. Own it. And let the Holy Spirit work through all those circumstances and know that God is for me. He's not against me. And whatever I set out to do, whether it looks good on the forefront or looks bad on the back end, I'm going to own this thing because if God be for me, who can be against me? You receive that word today? I know that you do. Can we stand all over the building if we're able in body? Nobody leaving, please, unless you got to catch an airplane or do something bad. And I know you don't want to do anything bad. But therefore, you can't leave. With your heads bowed in prayer. I'm going to ask you, are you here today and you're battling areas of your life where you've lost hope? Are you currently losing hope? Is that you today? Would you just slip your hand up and say, yeah, Joey, pray for me. There's areas in my life where I've lost hope or I'm currently losing hope. Maybe it's a marriage. Maybe it's a financial situation. Maybe it's a family situation. Maybe it's a, a health situation. Maybe it's a situation at work. Maybe it's a situation with your mental state. It's a situation with what you're going through. You're lost hope or you're losing hope. Can I see your hand? Anybody in here? Yeah, lots of hands. Okay. I know I, I, know I was on to something because I want to infuse you today with hope that's only found in God. Real hope that's found in Him. And I want you to have that hope today by receiving everything God has for you. And if you're here today and you're not right with God, God forbid if you were to breathe your last breath and slip into eternity and you were to see Jesus, it doesn't need to be, oh me. It needs to be, oh my. Oh my. I'm home. Well done, not undone. And today is your day for you to get prepared to see him. Not in an angry way or a vengeful way or a way you'll die in your sin. No, 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 no. Get out, get out of that mindset. Make a choice. Long to see him. I believe every believer that walks with Jesus for any length of time consecutively and consistently should have a, such a deep hunger to reach souls, especially in these days, that it should be overwhelming. It should be overwhelming them. And if there's not an overwhelming sense for that, it's because you're lost hope in areas and you haven't owned it. And God's telling you today through this word, you need to own that thing. If God's calling you to do something, you need to do it. 
Find out what God wants. Go do that. You'll be successful. If you're here today and you're not right with the Lord and you need to come back to him or maybe for the first time, can I pray with you today? Those of you watching, I'll pray with you as well. There's no distance in prayer. And let's say this prayer together, shall we? Out loud as a family. Heavenly Father, today I receive forgiveness for all of my sins. I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior and as my Lord. Jesus, come into my heart and change me. Make me the person you want me to be. My life is yours today, never to be taken back. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you said that prayer, we believe you got born again, born from above. Whether that's a rededication or back to the Lord, we believe it. How many of you said that for a first time or a rededication back to the Lord and really meant it? Can I see your hand? Just for me. God bless you. You, you, you. Anybody else? God bless you. Yes. God bless you. God bless you, ma'am. Wow. Okay. We're closing which means nothing. No, we are closing. How many of you, and we're gonna close with a dismissal if you need to go, but if you need to come, I wanna open this area up for you to be infused with hope today. How many of you have lost hope in an area? Are you losing hope? Again, can I see your hand? Okay. So I'm gonna ask the team to sing in a moment. and Our, our prayer partners will be here I'd be honored to be here with you. I don't want you to leave here today without the opportunity to be fully overflowed with Romans 15, 13, joy and hope. This is something that is essential for the days in which we're living in. If you don't own this and have this, you can't do anything else mighty in the kingdom of God or in your own home. So I say this to you today, all of you that are here, you need to be infused with hope, supremely blessed by God in spite of what you've gone through or going through. So those of you that want that infusion of that faith and hope, may the Lord be upon us today. And we're gonna close out this portion. Father, let the blessing of the Lord be upon your people. Let courage be upon them. Let joy be upon them. Let peace be upon them. Let faith be upon them. And Father, I'm praying right now that hope would overflow in them right now, even as they're watching that floor, overwhelming floor them with hope right now, where they're losing hope or they've lost hope. Floor them with the hope of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need to come forward for that, you're welcome to do it right now. If you need to go, God bless you. We'll see you again real soon. But if you need any prayer, come on forward. We'd love to pray with you. So oh.